whisper. That is why it is only when you condition yourself and you position yourself to a place of hearing, hearing. Faith comes by hearing, not want. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the depth. And that can only be engaged when you are able to get yourself and to do business with God in the deep waters. And I believe with all my heart that is what he is doing in our heart by exposing us to some of this truth that the enemy fight fiercely. The enemy fight fiercely. Not that people don't know this truth. They literally refuse to preach them. Deliberately just cooperating with the enemy because the devil doesn't like anything that emphasizes the cross. He doesn't. So don't think the obscurity of the vision of losing of the cross in the church, it is combined, it is deliberate and, and at the same time orchestrated by the forces of the enemy so that we don't get to be established in the place that God has designed for us. So let, let's take it patiently. Let us endure this season. We can talk about the champion in you. We can talk about the good things the motivational speakers are propagating to us. And incidentally, it is unfortunate that many preachers have turned out to be motivational speakers, knowingly or unknowingly. It's a deception. It's a deception. Encouragement is important. We are living in days you can easily be discouraged. There's nothing wrong to encourage ourselves, to build up our faith. But when it is taken too far to nullify what Paul fears in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17, what he fears to empty the power of the cross so that we begin to depend on something else outside the cross and outside Christ. We are in danger because that is where we lose our, our focus. That is where we lose our strength and our victory. And as the Lord is quicken me to, to this portion of scripture, because if we do not allow God to help us to, to be able to avoid that trap of the enemy, he says there in Colossians, Colossians 2, verse 8, not verse 8, it should be. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow, empty, and deceptive philosophy which depends on human tradition. And more so in our age, it depends on human philosophy, human psychology, human humanism, and theories that people have come up with that makes life easy to commensurate with the level of technology so that mentally, emotionally, and spiritually you are wired. You are wired to go ahead of God and do things that doesn't require you to depend on God. It's a hidden evil strategy of the enemy. How does that happen? These philosophies, this psychology, this wisdom, this knowledge, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world, rather than on Christ. Look at that. The elemental spiritual forces of this world, other than Christ. What are these? These are the things. These are the wisdom of men. These are the things that are appealing to us. These are the things that appear to be like, if you're not aligned to these things, either you're outdated or you're behind the news. One of those things that is fought by those philosophy and those traditions of men is the works of the cross. That's why I am not ashamed to share the cross. That's why I'm not ashamed to emphasize on the cross. Because in these last days, 
nothing is going to distinguish us from the world. Nothing else, nothing else, not wisdom. I think the world has come to a level of wisdom that is like, we can't beat it. It's only the wisdom that comes from the cross that can distinguish you from this world and give you a place where you are able to be a true, effective, representative kingdom citizen, ambassador of the kingdom of God, not ambassador of a country called Kenya or America, an ambassador of a kingdom called heaven. You must be able to visit there. You must be able to frequently consult your headquarters. You must be constant in touch. An ambassador who is out of touch with home-based headquarters is in trouble. So our responsibility is to remain connected to what is heaven saying. We are hearing many voices here down here. What is heaven saying? And as I listen carefully, heaven have not spoken otherwise. It says the power is in the cross. The wisdom is in the cross. Christ, the wisdom of God. Christ, the power of God through the cross. That is what the enemy is fighting. He's not interested with your literal challenges here and there. Those one he has left to some literal demons to deal with, to be throwing some, what were you calling them, spikes or whatever. But the enemy is engaged at the highest frequency to ensure that you remain oblivious of the workings of the cross, ignoring it, running away from it, seeking an alternative, seeking an easier way out. Sometimes that's why I'm appealing to you, if I do hard on you, I'm not too hard on you. I'm just being sincere and loving to you because what I'm giving you is what I believe with all my heart is essential for a true believer to have what we are seeking, the spiritual freedom, the spiritual stability, the spiritual maturity cannot come with the kind of the gospel that has been introduced in the market. Mm -mm. The ancient tells us otherwise. The old rugged cross has not shifted, has not changed. I strongly believe with all my heart that is where our solution, consolation to the path of freedom, stability, and maturity. So let's, let's separate the divine exchange. It's what the cross has done for us. It's finished. It's it, it, it just you to come and pick those blessings, those dynamics of God's blessings. You can't even exhaust them. They are there, a full package, ninefold package, if you like, already made for you. Just to come and experience them, plug in into it, and drink that well of life, joy, liberty, peace, strength, power, wisdom, concentrated there. But the problem is, you cannot access that well without the segment we are dealing with now. The gateway to that well is to be delivered from this present evil age. Convince yourself. That is a gateway to the well of everything that you want from God. But for you to access it, he doesn't even require you to know. It's not so much of what you have. It is, do you know you are delivered from this present evil age? And notice, it's not the world. It's not this world. You're not, it's not deliverance from the world. It is deliverance from this present evil age. It's a period of time. Because there's another deliverance we are coming to, which is the real deliverance from the world and the things that are happening in the world. But we are being reminded first, we are not subject to this period of this world. And the God of this world, who is evil, we are not subject so that even when we learn what goes on in the world, we already know in our mind we don't belong to this. 
present evil age where this dimension of wisdom, dimension of evil introduced by the enemy is coming to us. We are not partakers of that present evil age. We have tasted the power of the age to come. And as long as we fix our eyes there, don't even fool yourself that you have it. No, we have tasted. We don't have it. We have tasted. So we are looking forward towards that power of the age working in us. How does it work in us? Three levels. Freedom, stability, maturity. You begin to enjoy the power of the age to come. What is the power of the age to come? The package is in the well. The divine provision by the cross. The power gives you this, but the power cannot work when you're immature, when you're a baby. It doesn't happen. So it is a process of us being built up. We get to know we are not only delivered from this evil world age, we are also delivered from the law. Because the law, as good as it is, has become a hindrance for us. And knowing that we have been crucified with Christ, the law has died to us. So it no longer demands, it no longer put pressure in our lives, but we are guided by the Holy Spirit so that the old man, who is the main problem, the old man is the one the devil manipulates. That is the key thing. That's why we say it, between the divine exchange of the cross, there is the last one, he exchanged the old man to the new man. You have to transit. You see, you see that it's a transition. You have to transit from the old man to the new man. If anyone is in Christ, as I can see this bar before me, he has transited from the old to the new. From the old man to the new man. It's the new man who is delivered. The old man is still subject to everything that is still happening in the old world. But if Anyone is in Christ, the old is gone, the new has come. The question is, what is this new has come? Is it the one I'm pursuing? Is it the one I'm dealing with? Or am I still struggling with the old man? Grant, granted, many believers are still struggling with the old man. Why? Now we have come to the answer. To know we are delivered from what ties up the old man to the old world. What is that? We are not part of this age. Number two, the law enforces the old man's traits, character, behaviors, the appetite, the addictions that held that man is empowered, is strengthened by the law. Getting the picture? That's why you need now. You are a new man, yes, but you must be delivered from the law because the law cannot save you. The law cannot help you towards your sanctification. The law will bring you back to bondage. That's where religion has taken us there because religion has emphasized more on the law other than the spirit. Romans chapter 7 verse 12. If the law of God could not perfect us, no other law can. No other rules, no other regulations that man will come up with will ever perfect us. In fact, it is foolishness to keep those laws, trying to be sanctified by those laws. So be delivered from the law so that you begin to walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. And as you walk in the spirit, now I pray, I want, I'm just preparing you now to the next uh, uh, Dajuma will have to explain to me. He talked about five deliverances. He will give me the three more, I don't know. <laughs> me, I've already talked about two. <laughs> you, you help me in, in secret and help me the three because I don't know them. Now I am in the third one. <laughs> now I, I'm a right touch. But the truth is, these two deliverance, and you see, I am making a distinction here. These are real deliverance that must take place in us but not just freely. It is when we allow the cross to work in us and through us to produce and to be able to connect us to those deliverances that give, becomes the gateway to the well that all of us are thirsty for. Are you able to give us that introduction so that we can go to the next divine deliverance, if you like? 
our, the aspect of deliverance that we get from the cross. Utu wa kale uliweza kuondolewa na tumekufa pamoja na kristo Hivyo basi kuhuishwa katika roho ili kuwekwa katika mwili ama utu mpya Na lazima tubaini haya mawili kwa sababu tuko duniani lakini si wa dunia Ambayo tunambiwa basi huyu mtu wa kale anahuishwa nguvu na kupatio uwezo kutenda dhambi Na kuona njaa na matamanio ya ulimwengu kwa sababu tuko katika dunia Lakini tupambanue na kufahamu ya kwamba kwa sababu tumekufa chini ya sheria amba ilikuwa nyonge haingeweza kututakasa basi tukapokea utakatifu ambao ni wa Kristo pitia roho yake mtakatifu ambaye anatuhuisha na kuwetuwezesha kutambua kwamba tumuli mpya maana ya kali yamepita mapya yamefanyika hivyo basi katika kubadilisha nia zetu na mawazo yetu katika basi neno la Mungu tunatiwa nguvu kuweza kupambanua yaliyo mazuri yaliyo kamilifu na yaliyo ambayo ni thabiti mbele ya Mungu ili tukaweze kujua kwamba sasa tumekoma katika roho na sasa tumetha, tuko na nguvu ya kututhibitisha katika roho hivyo basi tuweze kutembea tukijua kwamba sisi Kristo jinsi alivyo nasi tuko hivyo The good news is that for sin shall no longer have dominion over us sin shall no longer be your master why because you are not under the law but under grace you see the distinction there Knowing that makes a lot of difference in your life because it will help you now to know why we are delivered from the law. We are not delivered from sin. We are delivered from the law dominating us through sin. It's not the law. The law is perfect. The law is holy. The law is righteous. But sin uses the law to dominate and to have mastery over us. What is the way out? It's when we are delivered from the law and then we begin to be led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. For as many as are led by the Spirit, they are what? They are the new men. As many as are led by the Spirit, they are the new man. Why? Those who walk by the sinful nature or the old nature, to walk in the flesh, Romans 8, 6, to walk in the flesh is death. To walk in the Spirit is is life and peace. You get the, the difference. It's like night and day. So when we are led by the spirit regularly, that is the only way towards spiritual maturity. Not trying to keep some rules, some laws, some prayers, some things. Don't, be, don't get up there. Galatians chapter 5, 8. We are not, you see, if we, one is keeping rules the other one is keeping what listening we, we gave a description of following a map and being guided by gps i have come to enjoy the gps of the holy spirit is the easiest way out from coming from dominion of sin is the easiest way to overcome the challenge you're going through the struggles you're dealing with to overcome certain habit, certain appetite, certain oppression, certain things that you don't want in your life. The way out is knowing how the GPS of the spirit works. It's the easiest and yet it is the, diffi- the most difficult part to get. It's easier to get out, of the, get out of the hook of whatever you are struggling with. Financial, emotional, domestic, Anything that ties you to the world, the way out is the Holy Ghost. The way out is the GPS. You have exited the wrong path and you are lost somewhere, you are wandering somewhere, GPS is available there. It will get you out of the detour and bring you back on course. But the sweetest, the best experience yet, it doesn't come easy. There is a price to pay. 
for the GPS to work for us. And that's what I want to give us today. Are you ready for this one? The third aspect of deliverance is what we are calling dying to ourselves. If you like to personalize it, dying to self. This is the third deliverance in my wrist here. And this is the key toward true spiritual maturity. I intend to be brief on this one because it needs to be taken piecemeal. This is what the enemy avoids by all means. All the traditions, all the religious rites he has introduced in the church has to come fridge and to cover the aspect of us need to die to self. Nobody like dying to self, including you as truly. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like dying to, to self. It's painful, but it's the only key that can connect you to the key that operates the GPS from above. I'm using those, te techno those terminology, but adventure, the young generation might get interested. I don't know. <laughs> but it is... It is so clear what God says in his word. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Those who do not walk after the flesh, but walk after the spirit. See the difference. What is the difference? You come out of condemnation just shifting from being led by the flesh and being led by the spirit. It's just switching. It sounds easy, but it's not. What is a switch? The, the switch from the flesh to the spirit is dying to self. Because dying to self is what enables you to leave the old man there, buried near Gorogoda, and you forget about him. Then you become a wanderer. You don't know where you're going. So you need somebody to guide you in this wilderness called the new world created in the image and in the pattern of God. You cannot navigate by yourself. You need a real guide. You are a tourist in this territory you have come. But in the old regime, you were born here in the world. You have lived here in the flesh. You have faced, visited with the flesh every single day. So you know everything, every mechanism of the flesh. You can, you can, you can fluctuate in, a, in any direction. But here, it's like you're blind. And then the Lord helped me to see why he has taken us this journey. You know what has happened here? When you cross over, you become poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Why? They have entered the kingdom. And the kingdom they have entered, they have no idea what is there. It's a new kingdom. That's why they need GPS. Say GPS if it, even if you don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> we need the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit cannot be contaminated by the any residue of the old man which has not died. That is what keeps the Holy Spirit. That's what we, we, Paul was saying in, in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, I think it's verse 19 or 20 there, he says, and be careful not to grieve the Holy Spirit who we are given to you as a seal that you no longer belong here. You have entered another territory and now you are in this citizenship. Romans 5, 1, therefore justified, qualified, declared righteous to enter into this Kingdom of grace. You get it? And now you are qualified to be in the kingdom of grace, but you cannot navigate your way. You cannot walk anywhere and find, what is that? Do you find in the kingdom of glory? The unsearchable riches of Christ are found here. That's why you have to be poor in spirit. What does it mean to be poor in the spirit? You must die. How do you die? Very well, we put it there. He said, I am crucified with the Christ. 
it's no longer I that live, but it is Christ who lives in me. It is only Christ living in you who can cross this other border. The I must remain this side. Where does the I go? The good question. That's the person we are talking about. Dying to I. Dying to self. Dying to self is dying to I. Anything associated to I must die. What is the significance there? Are you there in, I'm not, I mean, Galatians 2, verse 19. That is, that is the point because if you see that, it will help us and make our job very easy to define how this I must die. Hallelujah. For through the law, I died to the law. Look at that. Through the law, I died to the law so that I am I might be, I might live for God. You cannot live for God until you lie, you die to the law. And religion has not told us this. They have not emphasized this enough. Thank God, he has helped us to do it. Verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. Sometimes when I quote a scripture, some people look at me, are you sure that what is in the Bible? I have, cru- I have been crucified with the Christ. And I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the body, crossing the borders, I live by faith, not by law, not by works, by grace, by the Spirit. Hallelujah. In the Son of God. Actually, the best interpretation there, I live by the faithfulness of Christ. I no longer depend on myself. Why? I died on the cross and therefore I am empty. I am poor in spirit. I know nothing about the spirit world. I need to be taught. I need to. That's why the, the, the terminology is those who are regularly led by the spirit. Every single day of your life, you need to be led by the spirit. Unfortunately, many of us don't know how to be led by the Spirit. Let me try to break it down for us. What does it mean to be led by the Holy Spirit? It is literally knowing the will of God for every step you make every single day. Is it the will of God for you to go to the market? Is it the will of God to go to school? Is it the will of God for you to marry? Is it the will of God for you to eat? Is it the will of God to to, to wear what you are wearing that day? There is a way of knowing it, isn't it? That's what you are emphasizing on. Getting our mind renewed so that we know what? Three levels. The good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. The Holy Spirit operated by the good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Depending on what grade or where that which level you are operating on. If you are looking towards perfection, if you are looking towards maturity, then you should need to go and seek the perfect will of God, not just the good and acceptable. The good will of God is to come to church. Did you get it? The acceptable will of God is to come to church and worship him in truth and in spirit. You see the devil? There are levels. There's somebody who can come to church and fail to worship God in truth and in spirit. What have they done? They have just observed the will of God at which level? A good. Very low. The lowest you can go, actually, is to come to church. The next one is at least, even if you don't hear my message, you can worship God in truth and in spirit. It's acceptable. But the perfect will is the people who go beyond that. You worship God in truth and in spirit. You hear the word and then you obey the word. That is a perfect will of God. You hear the word and not only hear it, I began by saying faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Genuine faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God, not by hearing and by hearing the preacher. Did you know that? You don't need to hear a preacher. You need to hear God. Jesus was very clear. My sheep knows my voice. He never said, my sheep knows the voice of my shepherd. No. My sheep knows my voice. You are responsible to know God's voice to you. Because that is the only way you get the rema word, the revealed word. It is the word that is heard 
in the heart. It is the word when you hear, it is printed in your heart. Not by man. Right now, I'm speaking by the Spirit of God. And the word I'm speaking to you, you may reject it in your mind, but it is registering in your spirit if you have the Spirit of Christ. You can't resist it. It's not my word. That's what Jesus was saying. The words that I speak to you, they are not my word. These are the words that the Father has spoken. Now, if I am a minister of the gospel and I'm speaking the word of God, this is the word I have heard from the Father. I am not telling you what my father told me. My natural father, we were with him yesterday. He never told me to tell you anything. But my father, who is at the heaven, told me this morning to tell you, you must die. You see that? That's what Jesus was saying. I never speak what I think. So I'm not speaking what I think. I speak what he thinks and what he tells me to speak. What did he say? We must die. It is not I, but Christ. We must be delivered from self. What is this help? Self? Self is the demands that self put in you. Like, I am important. Why must I lift up my hands and worship God? Come on, you worship leader. What is self? Look at me. Am I the one to clean the church, really? A governor? It's self. Because the moment the self die, it's very easy. What is the governor of Nairobi? Madam whoever. It's very easy for that madam who has died. If she is the governor, yes, she has died to self. She can come to church today in CCR, despite of the horrible situations around her. She can ask, can I sweep the church today? Whole governor. That is an indicator. The governor is dead. There is somebody else inside the governor. Does she lose the title? No, never. What she becomes, she becomes a better governor when she can be a servant of the governor. Who is the governor? The master. That's what dying to self means. It is, the self is always saying, help me. I'm desperate. Pray for me. Cast out these demons. They are not demons. It is self troubling you. Can I repeat again this? It said, when I look around CCR, the people who come here and people who are here today, nobody need to be cast out in a demon. I'll be willing to cast them out if I can dis detect. <laughs> but I don't see them. They're not there. The problem you're dealing with, every one of us, old and young, it's self. It is self. And that self is the one who is asking you to do something that is contrary to God's known will. At your level. You don't have to do what Pastor Maura do. No, I'm not asking you to do that. It's crazy some of the things I do. But there is certain things that God asks you at your level. This is what I expect from you. And you know it. You know this, God want me to do this. But the A, the I says, I need this. I need to go here. Hmm? I need to do this, I need this. This is good for me, not what God wants. So what is the solution? For this I, this demands, denying self, what does it really mean? And we, we can refer to that and, and see whether we can tie up this point, Matthew chapter 16. What is dying to self? Please understand it. And, uh, and, and incidentally, this is not for babies. This is not for babies. Dying to self is for those people who think they are mature spiritually. Or who have been tempted to be told by somebody, hey, your spiritual frequency is very high, brother. <laughs> when, you, when you begin to hear certain things, you need to check whether you have truly died to self. And I, and I, and I know What happened there? Are you there? Matthew 16, 24. There we go. This is what the Lord is telling us. The body of Christ, because we are the body of Christ. 
Then Jesus said, then Jesus said, not Pastor Mwaura. Jesus said to his disciples, and we, are you one of them? Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves. Would you like to read those words together with me? Whoever wants to be my disciple must, must deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. And there is a full stop which the English people call period. <laughs> That's hard stuff, if you like. Would you like to change that one? I wish it is possible. I could do it for you. I could have deleted it from my Bible. If, 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 if it is just free for all, I could have deleted it from my Bible long time ago. I don't know, some of you, maybe the old generation, you may have read some books from somebody, a, a, a man of God called uh, Watchman Nee. At least I know Sister Modogo must have read that. And my wife, she gave me the book. She must have read unless she never read it. <laughs> but that, that man, it's like he just, he just, it just, he, he, his life revolved around the cross. It is dying to self. And the depth and dimension of dying to self from that man. I'm telling you, if you die to that dimension of that man, you are really dead. <laughs> dying to self. This is the beauty. That is what God expects from us. Denying yourself and taking up your cross and follow Christ. Believe me, this is what is missing in the body of Christ today. Losing the vision of the cross, the cross being obscured, is simply because we are protecting the self. We don't want the self to die. How do we protect it? Look at the next verse. What does it say? For whoever wants to save their life. Did you see that? Whoever wants to save their life. Which life? the life of self. So when you refuse the self to die, you are attempting to save the life of self to remain, though it was crucified, but you're trying to save it to live. What does that mean? It says, don't, but uh -uh, we can do it now for one, for one more time only. So when you try to preserve that self, To die, what you're doing, it's simply trying to preserve that life so that it live. But Jesus says that cannot happen. Whoever wants to save their life, they will lose it. Hallelujah. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. We love John 3.16, don't we? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Everlasting life. How do you have everlasting life? You must die to self. Why? You cannot have everlasting life unless you become a disciple of Christ. And you can't become a disciple of Christ unless you die to self. And you cannot have eternal life unless you die to self. That is a game changer. Do you still want to hold on to the old man? No. The freedom, stability, and maturity is dying to self. What I want, how I feel, whenever the body says this, whenever your feeling says this, you must be able to have a capacity, no. Say no to the appetite. Not to the appetite of the food you don't like, to the appetite of the food that you like. Whenever the chapati can be kept there and I cannot touch it, I know I have died to that one. <laughs> Are you getting the picture? It is, you look at that chapati and it's like it speaks to you. I don't know what speaks to you, but there is something in terms of food that speaks to many of us here. You look at that, others is samosa, mandazi, others is mitula, it doesn't matter, liver. Whatever it is, you look at it and it speaks loud to you that you must eat me. And then you say, no, you must eat me. Okay, it's for today. I see that conversation. It goes on on a daily basis. 
who is speaking here is not the chapati. It is the I who is saying I must eat chapati. Is that correct? It's the self-talk. We talked about self-talk the other day, isn't it? The self-talk is the one that communicates on the behalf of the object that is drawing you away from the cross. What is the self-talk? It is the things that attract you away from the cross. That's why you carry the cross daily. When you see the chapati, when you are fasting, you say, I have died to the chapati today. I am on the cross. Hallelujah. See you next tomorrow. It has to be real, practical. Some of us are attracted to furuza. Is furuza what? Is <laughs> Some of those things is like it flashes you your phone. It's like something is telling you don't. Please don't. That's a good voice, isn't it? But it's like self saying, ah, we have buana, undataka bandos, some bandos for today. There is a conversation. It sounds innocent, but it is a trigger to the trap of the enemy to the next level of bondage to self. Because the moment you feed that, as long as you know it is not right, I can do without. I don't really need bundles. I can do without it. But it has come with a force, so enticing and so forceful. You must take this. You must say yes. Dying to self. Is it easy? No. The cross is the place where your will and God's will crosses. The cross is where your will, the will of the self and God's will cross. This is where you die when your will changes and God's will take over. I was trying to just explain to see, to have our mind clear. What is this self? It's the will, the self will. What you want to do, what you want to eat, what you want to wear, what you want, where you want to go. The, the things that we debate with. So you must take your cross and, and die. Nobody can take the cross for you. Only you can take the, the cross and die there. The cross is a place where you die, and it is you who take the cross and die there, just like Jesus took the cross and he died there. Isn't it? So it's a choice that you make, dear saint. And I want to urge us, let's take the cross. Let's follow Christ if we truly want that life. If you try to save the life of the, of the, of the soul, the life of I, the life of self, the life of I, the life of self, the life of, is the same as the life of old man. You get it? The old man appears in the form of enticement, trying to, you, trying to woo you, seduce you, to do the things that you used to do when you are not born again. You see that man coming you, visiting you regularly? We say putting off the old man is putting off what? The old behaviors the characteristics of the old man. Putting them off. Is that correct? What are these? Behaviors, tendencies, traits that represent the I, the self in you, demanding you to do what you used to do. I wish you were there when you used to sing that song. The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. The things I used to do, I don't do the end. And when we, we were young, when you we were singing that song, by the way, it was a revival time. <laughs> that song must be sung again. The things I used to do, the things I was doing last week, now I am dead to them. The things you know you were doing last week and you should not be doing them. Die to them. Test yourself. Have you died to self on those things? Is it a hard saying? Yeah, a little bit, but God will help us to die to self. Amen. Now, before I make the last point, did you get that picture? What does it mean to, be, to die to self? I would rather stop there and we go home. And somebody who never got it, we better sit down and just explain to them, this is what it means to die to self, brother. 
Because if you don't understand it, you will waste a whole life. Just like Jesus said, it can't be changed. If you try to save that life, what you're protecting to leave you. Hmm? Like for example, and I do this humorously. <laughs> let, let me not say it, I think it will offend some people. But just be attentive to what I'm saying. Right? I know we don't like it, but it takes courage for me to preach it. And guess what? You don't need this message more than I do. I desperately need it. Like yesterday. That's what I need more than anything else. So, if you don't like it, please allow me to preach to myself. I'm hearing myself speaking. Because I am speaking to myself. You see, myself. Myself is still hearing, meaning it's still alive. That self must die so that it no longer hears. It's no longer agitated by somebody speaking, dying to self. The moment you get angry by somebody speaking, dying to self, it's because it is self-resisting. That's why you're feeling some twitch, something. Mm -mm. No, no. That's why, that's one good reason why you need to hear what I'm telling you. If you're not amused, if you don't like it, isn't it? It means there is a self addressed and the self respond and speak and speak loudly and convincingly. Why? Because it wants to exert control over you. I will finish by giving the example of Jesus and we can break and go home. Philippians 2 verse 5 and 8. As we turn there, just give us a synopsis of that part of dying to self, then we see how Jesus died to self and we go home and see whether we can die or we will refuse to die. Basi ikiwa tuko tumekufa katika mwili hatuko chini ya la, ya, ya, ya hukumu maana iwapo mtu ako chini ya hukumu basi hawezi kutembea katika roho na tunaambiwa kwamba hatuko chini ya hukumu hivyo basi tuwapaswa kutembea katika roho na wala si katika mwili basi ba, maana kutembea katika mwili ni mauti bali kutembea katika roho ni uzima basi na amani na ndiposa tunaambiwa ndio huyu mtu mwili kukufa ama kusulubisha mwili ni jambo ambalo ni bayana kwetu wazi kuweza kujisalimisha chini basi ya ku kuongozwa roho mtakatifu maana ni jambo ngumu si rahisi lakini kwa sababu ikiwa tumeku tu, tunaambiwa ya kwamba iwapo mtu ako katika ndani ya Kristo amefanyika kuwa kiumbe kipya ya kale yamepita na yamekuwa mapya basi huyu mtu mpya anapaswa basi kweli kusimama katika hali ya ukomavu anapaswa katika kutembea katika hali basi ya udhabiti anapaswa basi kutembea katika hali ya ule uhuru ambao tumeupokea katika Kristo hivi kwamba hatuko chini basi ya uongozi ama ama utumwa wa shetani ndivyo basi tunaambiwa tutakapojisalimisha kuwa kweli tumefanya huyu mtu kukufa basi ni vile Paulo anavotuambia nimekufa na kusulubishwa pamoja na Kristo basi si mimi niishie bali ni Kristo aishie ndani yangu katika imani ndani ya yeye aliyenipenda hata kunifilia na ikiwa ni hivyo basi tutaweza kubaini ya kwamba vile tunaambiwa tutakapobadilisha mawazo yetu tunajitoa mili yetu kuwa dhabihu zilizo hai na tunajitoa kuwa ibada iliyo kamilifu iliyo nzuri inayokubalika ama inayopendeza na kamilifu na ndiposa amepeana ule mfano wa, GB, wa GPS ambayo sasa tuseme ni, ra, ni, ni ramali ya kiroho maana ukiwa uko katika mwili basi utatembea na ramali ile ya kawaida ambayo itakupoteza wakati unapotembea wakati unapotaka kutenda jambo lakini ikiwa uko ndani ya roho mtakatifu basi la, ramali ya roho mtakatifu katika hali ya ile teknolojia tunaambiwa tunaishi sasa haiwezi kama kukukwa
kukupoteza maana kadri unapoifuata na kukuelekeza haiwezi kukupoteza na ndiposa huyu roho basi anatuelekeza tunapotaka kuomba tunapotaka kukula tunapotaka kutembea tunapotaka kusimama katika hali mbali kadha wa kadha ni lazima tujisalimishe katika huyu mtu mpya maana tunaambiwa kwamba basi tusimkwaze roho mtakatifu maana tutakapomkwaza roho mtakatifu basi tunaambiwa kwamba tutakuwa chini ya sheria na tayari tumeshakufa chini ya sheria tuko chini ya neema kupitia utakatifu wa Kristo naye basi ndio ndio anasema ya kwamba ni lazima tujinyenyekeze ili basi tukapate kuwajitolea kuwa dhabihu zilizo a uh, uh, kamilifu zilizo nzuri na za kukubalika na tena kapeana mfano kwa wewe kutenda kile kizuri tumekuja kanisani na kwa wewe kumwabudu Mungu katika roho na ukweli basi ndio kwa hali yako wewe mwenyewe unapojitunguza moyo wako unajua ume, ume, imekupasa kumwabudu roho katika roho na, na ukweli na iwapo kweli umemwabudu kuinua mkono siku shurutishwa uinue mkono siku shurutishwa imba siku shurutishwa fanya na pia amepea na mfano ya kwamba gavana ule wa Nairobi nadhani ni kanano ama ni kanini ame akijisalimisha chini ya roho mtakatifu basi ataenda kwa kanisa na pati kuchukua fagio kufagia kanisa na kulifanya kuwa safi na sio kwamba hiyo itamdalilisha kuonekana kwamba yeye si mtumishi wa kuonekana kwamba ni mjumbe lakini basi atakuwa mtumishi kamilifu ndani ya kutembea katika ile maarifa na na, na, na na ufahamu ya kuwa kwamba yeye ni mtumishi kamilifu katika roho basi twapaswa tuji tujisalimishe chini ya roho na tutaweza kutoa matunda ya pasoyo toba na kukuwa watumishi wa Mungu ama wajumbe wa Mungu maana ndiposa amesema tu kibeba msalaba wetu siku baada ya siku wakati baada ya wakati basi tutapo, hatutapoteza maisha yetu bali yule ambaye hataweza kubeba msalaba wake ama kuja, kukana maisha yake basi ameshapoteza yale maisha yake lakini kuyahifadhi ni katika hali ya kukufa kila siku katika msalaba ili tukapate kuyaopoa ama kuyaokoa wakati Kristo atakapokuja I think the Lord is in helping me not to go to the next level we can't handle this we can't handle this for today let's spare it for next week let's deal with self Jesus perfect example is clear he did not consider equality with God anything to be held on to. But what did he do? He did not only humble himself, he emptied himself of that dignity, that glory, that reputation. He emptied himself. So cross is the place where you empty yourself and you become poor in spirit and when you become poor in spirit you are desperate for the spiritual milk of the word when you become poor in the spirit you cannot you hunger and thirst for righteousness when you become poor in the spirit you are blessed because you mourn in the for the things of the spirit when you're poor in the spirit you become meek you no longer fight for yourself there is somebody who defends you when you're poor in the spirit you're pure at heart why you have gone to the cross when you're pure in uh, when you when you when you're empty or when you are when you're poor in spirit now that is the person who can be persecuted and they just rejoice we need to get there jesus by his you are calling it to the school ministry of jesus he led us to becoming a disciple quality disciple what was the, the requirement number one? blessed is the one who is poor in spirit did you see that cycle he had not talked about dying to the cross but he was preparing these people to the cross because the poor in spirit is the outcome of dying on the cross it's not possible for example to come to you blessed are poor in the spirit you can't be poor in spirit just by hearing that no it was a preparatory message for this romans uh, matthew 16 24 so that now disciples we are prepared a long time 
So when Jesus is coming and saying, now you must die to self, they were ready for it. He never spoke to us when we were in Skora. He's speaking to us when we are in infinity, when we have connected with the... You see, you see God takes us in true dimension and he says, Paul taught us in Romans chapter 3, I pray that Christ may dwell in your heart. Christ may dwell in your heart by faith so that you can be strengthened in your inner man so that you are sensitive to the things of the spirit so that your eyes can be anointed with anointing that can see the things of the spirit so that you can know the things that God has for you so that you can know the things that God has prepared for those who love him you have been immersed in the dimensity of the love of God that you may know the love of Christ that you may know the depth the wind and the length and the height of the love of God the love that surpasses understanding you are immersed in that love if you ask you to die to anything you will surely die you can't resist what is that he says no greater love than this can man demonstrate that he can die for his friend if Jesus can die for you as, your, as his friend what is it Mutura you can't die to a Mutura come on he demonstrated that love the depth of love so asking us now, unless you die, is not asking too much, surely. It's not asking too much. I consider it asking too little. He has demonstrated to us. He emphasized it again, Romans 5. Romans 5. We are justified by faith and we have access the grace of God's kingdom. Now we are at peace with God. Although we go through trials and tribulation in this world, they will always be there. Challenges will always be there. But what is Paul saying? But we still rejoice in these trials and tribulation. Why? We died long time ago. Trials don't worry us. Trials are it is the, it's the, it's the, it's the level of going to maturity. So when the trials come, what do we do? How do we respond to trials? How do we respond to pain? We do not cry. We do not weep. We do not mourn. How do we respond to the trial? We do what? Consider it joy when you go through various kind of levels and degrees of trials. Why? It is taking you towards perfection. It is taking you towards what? Maturity. It is taking you towards emptiness. Mm. Why do you think trials come to our lives? It is to kill the self in us. Can I say that again? Why do trials come to us? It's not just to cause us pain. Pain is removing those things that are not necessary in your system. Is that correct? That's what dying to self does. You remove most of those things that need to be removed so that even when the trials come, they will not be painful. More, they will not be painful as they would have been if you have not dealt with the self. God has not, no otherwise but to deal with the self. He has to deal with the self. Either way, if you don't deal with the self, he will allow. Are you ready for this one? If you don't deal with yourself, he will allow circumstances around you to deal with the self. Which one is better? David was wise. He says, I would rather fall in the hands of God. There is mercy. Where is that mercy? When he tells you, crucify yourself, yourself. Don't, 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 don't allow me to crucify yourself. It is painful. 